Good evening, and welcome to Relevant, the monthly contemporary service at the First Congregational Church in Hanson. We have a wonderful service tonight. I'm excited that you could join us either in person or online. Uh, we'll be led in worship tonight by our dear friends, Bob and Kathleen Craig. Um, and then we'll hear a wonderful message by high school senior Kyle Shaughnessy. Before we get started, um, I would like to make a few announcements. First, please notice that social distancing is being practiced at the service. All the people you will see up here, including myself, are wearing masks when we're not at microphones or at instruments. Secondly, during the service, we have a prayer board in back. Um, we would love for you to post your prayers, either joys, concerns, thanksgivings, anything that is on your heart tonight, we would like you to post back there. Now, the ones that are on the prayer board will be said later, we will pray for later on in the service. If you have confidential prayers, um, we do have a box back there that you can actually fill out one of the cards, fold it up and put it right in the box. Um, and that will go straight to Senior Pastor uh, Peter Smith. Um, if you're online, let us know what your prayer requests are right in the comment section and we'll actually take from that as well and we'll pray for those people. If it's confidential, send an email to psmith at fcchanson.org. Now, if tonight, if you feel led to leave a donation or give a donation, you are more than welcome to do that. Um, actually, we have a basket in the back as well as a QR code that will bring you right to our webpage for that. Um, for those online, you can actually go straight to our website and select the Donate tab. Also on our website, we'd love to connect with you. Right next to the Donate tab is the Connect page. Fill out the form and we'll be excited to send you more information, um, our weekly newsletter, you can keep up to date and we can keep up to date with you as well. Um, so that way you guys know what's happening around here. Lastly, we have a great event coming up this Saturday. Uh, we have the 6K Walk for Water by World Vision. And we're doing this because we're excited about it. We're excited about what the outcome can bring. So it is estimated that women and girls spend a combined 200 million hours hauling water every day. The average woman in Africa walks 6K or six kilometers every day to haul 40 pounds of water. This one got a lot of our youth members. Every day, more than 800 children under the age of five die from unsafe drinking water. Um, 2.3 billion people live with, live with out access to basic sanit sanitation in the world today. And 785 million people lack access to clean water. That's one in 10 people. That's pretty crazy. So we are really excited about this idea of being able to help these people around the world. Um, this Saturday from 10 to 2, we're walking 6K. We are walking 3.72 miles for this. And when you sign up, you get a race day packet. You get a shirt. You get your race bib that actually shows the picture of the child that you're supporting for water with your registration fee, uh, which is $50 for adults, $25 for kids under 18. And that child will get clean water for as long as they're in that community. That's a one-time payment. You're not um, doing this every single month. This is a one-time payment to help this child. And each child is different on every single race bib. Um, leading up to um, the day on Saturday, uh, we'll be actually posting a video or an article on how the 6K walk throughout many years has impacted children and families around the world in the past and why we're doing it today, or not today, but Saturday. Um, today and this week, be looking for a story um, from Violet from the Zambian Project. Zambian Project. Um, her story comes from six years ago. So think about that. This has been going on for at least six years, and this is where we are right now with all those statistics still. Um, 
today's the last day to register for the walk if you would like to receive your race day packet before this Saturday. So let us know. Come see us. If you'd like to make a donation to the team, uh, you can write checks out to World Vision, and we'd be happy to meet with you and talk with you a little bit more about that. Now, before we get started for today's service, let's start in a time of prayer. Father, we are here to worship you, and we are here to praise you. Please bless this evening. Please bless this service and place your hand over everyone involved. Place your hand over Bob and Kathleen as they lead us in worship tonight to praise you. And we ask that you bless the, me the message that Kyle has prepared for us tonight. Lord, we hope that everyone who hears it recognizes your truth. We thank you for all that you do, Lord, and for all that you've done and all that you continue to do in the lives of those who love you and who support you, Lord, and all those around the world. Lord, let this service be a blessing to you and bless each and every one of those who hear the music and the message tonight. Lord, help them to humble themselves and to praise you, Lord. We ask you to fill this place with your mercy, Lord, with your grace, with your Holy Spirit. We are here to worship you. Hear our praises, Lord. In Jesus' holy, precious name, amen. And please help us welcome Bob and Kathleen Craig. Oh, it's wonderful to be here. They're way too kind. They're way too kind. <laughs> John, the book of John. I could just start at the beginning and keep reading, but 1-1, one, one, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And skipping to verse 14. And the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So this evening, I almost said this morning, so this evening we're going to start with maybe an unexpected song. And I know there are some really good voices here, and it's great to be able to actually have some people together here and online. Um, I want participation. We need participation tonight, okay? <laughs> I really haven't sung for a long time. So um, let's stand. If you're able, stand, sit, whatever you're comfortable doing, but please join with us. My soul magnifies the Lord. Goodness of great joy for every woman, every man. This will be a sign to you, a baby born in Bethlehem. Come and worship, do not be afraid. A company of angels, glory in the highest. And on the earth, peace among those who turn to its favor rest. Come and worship, do not be afraid. My soul, my soul, magnifies the Lord. My soul, magnifies the Lord. He has done great things for me. 
great thing for me. Unto you a child is born, unto you a son is given. Let every heart speak ere his throne, in every nation under heaven. Come and worship, do not be afraid. Praise God. My soul, my soul, magnify the Lord. My soul, magnify the Lord. My soul, my soul, magnifies the Lord. My soul, magnifies the Lord. He has done great things for me, great things for me. Of His government, there will be no end. He'll establish it with His righteousness. And he shall reign from this day on. His name shall be a wonderful counselor, everlasting Father. A wonderful. Magnifies the Lord, magnifies the Lord. He has done great things for me, great things for me. There's so many parts of that song that I love, and we could talk about how we want every nation under heaven to be able to praise him. And there's so much going on in so many places. You know, we've got our own story here and there's stories in each of these countries around the world. Um, there's just so much here, but our soul can magnify the Lord. Where would I run? But to the throne of mercy, where would I kneel? But at this cross of grace, how great the love, how strong the hand that holds us, oh, beautiful. So beautiful, so here I have to lift you high, Jesus, be glorified in all. of healing there is a son who came in grace and truth how great the love that carries us to kindness wonderful your wonderful
brought me back to life. I am yours, forever yours. Brought me and now be lifted high. Right here and now be glorified. God of heaven and earth, God who brought me back to life. I am yours forever yours. My power to We're getting ready to depart Hanson in the next few weeks and move on to a very new place <laughs> for us. Oops. Um, this, this song was very meaningful to me. It, you know, in all things, for all my life, no matter where I am, things, my life is in God's hands. And our lives together are in God's hands and your lives individually and corporately as a church are in God's hands. And together tonight, we can be here bowing down, lifting God high. Um, but knowing that whatever happens going forward, he is the rock. So you let's all stay seated would be great and um, sing together, Jesus, you are holy. Sorrow deeply, God, yes, the 
glory of the cross Jesus you are holy you are glorious you are pure of all praise all praise Jesus you are holy you are glorious you are pure of all Oh, praise Jesus, you are holy, you are glorious, you are the of all praise. Oh, praise Jesus, you are holy, you are glorious, you are the of all You know, sometimes with some of these praise songs, there is a lot of repetition in them. Um, and I think sometimes that's a really good thing because it takes us a while, right? <laughs> it takes us a while to kind of jettison all this stuff that we've kind of walked in here with <laughs> and to focus our, our hearts and our minds on him. The last song we're going to do um, uh, this in, in this grouping here. Um, if you want to stand up, that's great. This is King of Glory. And there's a little, bit of, a little bit of call and response that you can participate in in the chorus where, you know, I ask the question, who is this King of Glory? And you can answer, the Lord is strong and mighty. Okay? So let's all um, stand if you're able and want to join in King of Glory. <laughs> Lift up your case, be lifted up. Tell everyone how great the love, the love coming down from heaven's gate. Fills the earth with hope and grace. We sing, who is this King of glory? We'll build it up. Lift up your hands, be lifted up. Let the redeemed declare the love. And we bow down at heaven's gate to kiss the feet of hope and grace. We sing, who is this king of glory? Who is this king of glory? Oh, 
Let's hear it for Bob and Kathleen. We will hear them uh, after Kyle's message. And at this point, I am very honored and very excited to welcome Kyle Shaughnessy up for his sermon. All righty. My mask is caught on my ear. You gotta love that. All right, am I good? Close enough to the mic? All right, um, so like she said, my name's Kyle Shaughnessy. I'm from Plymouth, uh, the New Testament church in Cedarville. Um, and our friend, our pastor, Pastor Dan, is friends with Pastor Peter, and he had asked if we had anyone who wanted to come share a message. And I've done little, like, mini messages at the beginning of our sermons, like five minutes, so nothing to this magnitude, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so he had asked me if I wanted to do that, and I prayed about it a little bit. And I said that I would do that. So a little bit about me, like I said, Kyle Shaughnessy. I'm from Plymouth. Uh, I grew up in a church. Um, never really took it too seriously till I was about 14, 15. I just kind of went to church. It was just what you did on Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights, Saturdays for men's breakfast. When I became about 16 years old, God really got a hold of my life. And that's when I started to take my faith really more seriously. And I started to grow a lot more. I joined a Bible study. Um, and I really started to grow a lot more. So... Pastor Dan had asked me if I'd actually do an open for our church, one of those little five-minute mini-messages, probably about a month ago. So I'd been praying about that and wondering what I was going to do it on, and that actually turned into this. So I was, at the time, I was landscaping. So I was in a landscaping garden, and this is just, the name of my message is Priorities, um, but this is just a little bit on how I landed on this. So I was landscaping, and we were weeding a garden, and we were weeding grass, flowers, and someone had spilled chive seeds, and they were growing all over the garden. So that's what we were pulling up at the time was just a ton of chives. And I looked at my boss, and I was like, j j I was listening to worship music, and I was praying about what I was going to do it on. And I looked at him, and I said, these are good things that we're pulling up. And he said, not there, they're not. And I was like, I think I can work with that. So, so that's, that's how I landed on this. So I, the, my, the first point I have is good things are actually bad things if misplaced. Our pastor's favorite um, verse is Colossians 1.8, and that's kind of the covering for my first point. It says, and it's talking about Jesus. And it says, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. So it's saying God's over everything. In everything, he's over everything. And that's really what my first point's about. So I'm just going to read a couple of verses and give a couple examples of this, and then we'll move on to my next point, and that's how this will go. Um, so the first verse I'll read is, I'm going to read a ton of verses. You don't have to try to follow along in your Bibles or anything. I'll read them right here, but if you just pay attention. Um, so 1 Peter 4, 8 says, And above all things have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. And then John 15, 12 says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So very clearly here, love one another. Very simple commandment, basic. But then you read down to Luke, and it talks more about the positioning of this love. So Luke 14, 26 says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, his mother, and his wife, his children, brothers, and sisters, yes, even hate his own life, he cannot be my disciples. And then last verse, and then I'll discuss this. Matthew 8, 8, um, Matthew 8, 20 through 22 says, And Jesus said to him, 
Foxes have holes and birds have air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. And then another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go bury my father and then I will follow you. And Jesus said to him, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. (laughs) So it goes that we read the first two verses and it says, love one another, bear with one another, love one another. And then God says, no, don't go home, bury your dad. Come follow me now. And then he says, um, if you don't actually hate your family, then you can't follow me. So those might seem contradictory when you first read them. But as you look about it, it's the positioning of that love. Christ gets preeminence over all, and then it's the positioning of where those people go. So if, you, if you're choosing to stay with your father over following Jesus, then yes, that's the wrong position, and that's a bad thing. And that was confusing for me when I was first going over this, because I'm like, it's, you tell us to love our fathers, but then you say, if we love him that much, then we love him too much. Yes, that's too much love, because God gets preeminence over everything. It's the, he's the most important. So it's not saying that you actually hate your family. It's saying in comparison, you should love Christ more than anything because he is the most important. Um, and I just want to point out, so it, you, that's, what you tie your, that's what you tie your carriage to. You don't tie your carriage to the love of your family, to love of others. And Peter actually um, touches on this. In Matthew 26, 33, it says, but Peter said to him, talking to Jesus, even if all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. So it's like, Peter's recognizing that there's a possibility every single person in his life falls away from Christ. And he says, I'm okay with that because I'm attached to you and that's who I'm tied to. You're preeminent, you're over all things, and you're most important to me. So Peter's like, everyone else in my whole life could walk away and I would still follow you. Um, And that's really where our attachment and relationship and love for Jesus should stand is if everyone else walked away, if I was mocked, if I was hated, he promises persecution we should still love him. Uh, And then another verse that touches on this last point till I'll move on is Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. I won't read the whole thing, but it says, in everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal. So there's a season for everything under heaven, and not all of those are good things. Killing is not a good thing, but it's, there's a purpose for it under heaven. So God's saying there's a purpose, but if your seasons are blending, if your love for people are blending with your love for God, if they're interfering in that garden, then, then they're in the wrong position, and that's no longer a good thing. If your time to heal is mixing with your time to die, then that's not a good thing. If you're harvesting and you're planting or mending, they're not a good thing. Christ is saying there's specific seasons and positioning for every good thing he's given us, and even every purposeful not good thing. There's a position for everything. And that's really just was like, that was my first point. I was like, wow. Like when my boss said something as simple as like, not there, that's not a good thing. I was like, it's very true. And it's true in our lives. Um, The next point I'll make, so I was thinking, I was on this weeding analogy. I'm like, all right, so we got to weed out good things. I really got like started thinking on this weeding analogy. Like we got to weed out good things because especially as like, people who have been Christians longer, it's hard to recognize. It's like, yeah, I love my family. I'll skip church to go visit them, like whatever. You get like ingrained in these priorities, this like list of priorities, and God's like top three. So it's like the more you like sit in that, the harder it is to be like, to like as a Christian for 10 years to be like, oh no, my priorities are a little out of line. Like not a ton. God's not 10, God's two. But God two is still wrong. Like that's wrong. Um, but then I was thinking, and I was like, we do need to be discerning of, like, sinful habits that we have, um, habits that are just sinful that need to be completely removed from our lives, not just repositioned, but removed. Um, Second Tim- Timothy 2, 22 through 23 says, Fee- flee also youthful lusts and pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with all those who call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. And this is the real verse I want to talk about. 23, it says, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. So I was thinking about this, and I was thinking of a verse my buddy quotes to me all the time, which is like, avoid coarse jesting. So avoid coarse jesting and avoid ignorant and foolish disputes. So I was thinking, and as I was going over these, I was like, these aren't lesser sins. I'm like, oh, like my buddy will, like I said, will quote that verse to me all the time. And I'm like, oh, I don't lie though. I don't cheat. I don't kill. I don't murder. Like I don't do all these like the bad sins. So like, okay, every once in a while I have a 
foolish, ignorant dispute that generates strife, and I know that, but those are like the lesser sins. And it's like, no, there's no such thing as a lesser sin. Sin is degenerative. It eats away and separates us from God and causes death. In Romans, it says, all have fallen short of the glory, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And then later on, it says, the wages of sin are death. So you've all sinned, and the cause of that sin is death. So there's not lesser sins. So like I said, as I've been going to church my whole life, I know these things, but I always have kind of viewed it as like, and eh, like, that is what it is. Like to have a dumb political argument that I know stirs up strife with someone and separates me from a closer relationship with that person, it's not actually beneficial. The Bible says, let everything you say be beneficial to those who hear. So when you have these foolish disputes, they're not beneficial to those who hear. So why are you saying them? Are you saying them to prove yourself that you're right? Because that's what it is with me. And that's so backwards, that's so prideful, and that's so twisted. So that's really something that I was thinking about. Like all sin eats away at you. All sin is degenerative. Um, Mark 7, 20 through 23 says, and he said, what comes out of a man, it is what comes out of a man that defiles him. For from within, out of the hearts of men proceed evil thoughts. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. So I was thinking, I was like, not only do we have to be careful of these lesser sins, but we have to be so careful with what we put into ourselves because Christ's saying right there, that's what defiles you. What you put into you has to, what comes out of you is when you are defiled, but what you put into you is why you're being defiled, why those things are in there. The Bible says take every thought captive. So if we're not doing this and we're allowing whatever to come into us, and then we're wondering, why am I being like, why are these things coming out of me? Because you've allowed them to be put in you. You've participated in foolish arguments. You've listened to cruddy music. You've um, argued with people or you've listened to things you shouldn't be listening to. You've watched things you shouldn't be watching and they're inside of you and now they have the ability to defile you. And one last verse on this, or not one last, but another verse on this point is Matthew 13, 22. And it says, now he who received the seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and cares, but the cares of this world and the deceit of riches choke out the word and he becomes unfruitful. So back to the weeding analogy, these weeds, the cares of this world choke out. So you might be confused, be like, God, why am I not more fruitful? God, why am I not producing more? God, why am I not seeing you move more? And it's like, because you're being choked out by these things that you have put inside yourself. You're being choked out by these things that you deem little, but I've told you cause death. It's like, how, how, I'm the God of the universe. I told you these cause death. And you're like, eh, like they are what they are. And then you wonder why you're being unfruitful. It says they choke it out. Um, you really shouldn't care about the cares of this world. Like God says in Matthew 10, 22, you will be hated for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. So it's like, that's the one promise you get, is you endure to the end, you'll be saved. That's the end-all, be-all of Christianity, not the cares of this world. You'll, he promises you hatred. He promises you, you, you will be hated. That seems pretty specific. So I've, I've been asked this before. If you're not being hated for my name, if you're not being persecuted for my name, if you're not being made fun of, if you're not making people uncomfortable, if you're not uncomfortable, what are you doing wrong? Why are people so comfortable around you? Because God challenged people. God told people to pick up their cross. God said, come follow me. Oh, you won't bury your father now. Like, don't go bury your father. Let me go. Like, God didn't make people comfortable. God wasn't in this world. He was comfortable being uncomfortable. Matthew 6, 24 says, no one can serve two masters, for he will either hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't serve God and the world. You can't serve people and be like, oh, I'm going to make them comfortable. I don't want to upset them by saying this. You have to give them the truth. Like, and you have that promise in the end. You have the promise of you will be persecuted for my name, but you also will be saved if you endure to the end. Uh, and my final point is becoming more like Christ can be more of a process than we want. Um, and I wrote, weeds come back. Um, and so we'll, we'll dive into that a little more, but Romans 7, 15 through 9, 7, 15 and 19 says, for I do not understand what I am doing, for I am not practicing what I want to do, but I do the very things I hate. For the good that I want to do, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want to do. And I wrote, growing in Christ is a process. He does say that when you're in Christ, you're a new creation. But also, this is Paul, the greatest apostle there was. This is Paul writing, like, the things I hate, 
I find myself doing sometimes. And sometimes, like, like we want to see ourselves grow, like, right away, especially as older Christians in the church, sometimes it's hard to s- admit that you're still struggling with something. Um, but Philippians 1, 6 says, For I am confident of this very thing. He who began a good work in you will, perf- will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. You won't be perfected until the day of Christ Jesus. So if that's what you're, stri- you should be striving for that. But if you think you've arrived at that or you think you want other people to perceive you as having that perfection, you're looking at it wrong. Even Paul still struggled. He wrote like half the New Testament and he's admitting there's things I do that I hate, that I don't want to do, that I still find myself doing. So it's a process. Um, and then I wrote, I was saying, I was like, but some people will be like, oh, so it like, doesn't really matter what I do. I'm still going to mess up. And he touches on that in Romans 6. He says, for, so like the grace license to sin. It's not a license to sin. Romans 6, 1 through 2 says, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? So like, should I sin a bunch so God can be super gracious to me? That's pretty cool. I can do whatever I want, and then he's still super gracious. And Paul says, far from it, with an exclamation mark, how shall we who have died to sin still live in it? But So, like, you're not called to live in it. That's not acceptable. But we, the point I'm trying to make is we do have to still remember the type of forgiveness Christ offers and the type of the process of sanctification that he promises. Um, in Matthew 18, 20 through 22, it says, Then Peter came up to him and said, Lord, how many times shall my brother sin against me and I still forgive him? Up to seven. Seven's plenty. And then I'm done with this dude because he keeps doing it. And God says, no. Some versions say it 70 times seven. This one says up to 77 times. So it's like, this is the type of forgiveness that Christ offers. So we're not called to live in sin, but we also have to recognize you are going to struggle. And the last point I have is so, it, confessing it to others is beneficial. So it doesn't benefit you at all to be like, oh, all right, I'm not struggling with this. I'm just going to hide this away. James 5, 16 touches on it. It says, therefore, confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person, when it is brought about, can accomplish much. So God's saying right here, like, tell people about your struggles. Share it with others. Like, you don't have to feel like, and I've, I said this to my pastor one time. I'm like, sometimes I feel like Christians, they feel like, once they share a problem once, it has to be fixed or else their walk with God is like, oh, like, what are they doing? They, they dealt with lust a year ago. How, how dare it pop up again? Like, we're not called to walk in that. We've defeated that. But also, I've, I use the analogy. It's like you're putting these chains that are unlocked back on you. But when you say it to another person, they're like, dude, what are you doing? Like, that's not locked. It's so much harder to deal with sins that keep popping up on your own because you're condemning yourself and God's not a God of condemnation. He's a God of conviction. He convicts you so he wants you to be better, but he doesn't want you to feel guilty, to feel shame, and to feel condemned, but that's the lie the devil has on you of like, oh, you did this before, so like you're, you're like, this is what you are now, like don't tell anyone, but God's telling you right here, confess your sins to one another and it, is, and it can accomplish much. And then Proverbs 18, 28 13 says, one who conceals his wrongdoings will not prosper, but one who confesses and abandons them will find compassion. So again, it's saying, if you like hiding these things that you struggle with is not prosperous to you or anyone else. God says, bear with, bear each other's burdens in love. Like we're called to bear with one another, to love one another. Um, and it also connects. It says, he who confesses and abandons. It connects, confesses and abandons. Because once you confess them, it's so much easier to abandon them. But like I said, when you're living in that guilt, when you're living in that shame, it's so much harder to abandon them. And it says but he who confesses and abandons them will find compassion. Um, that's what I had to share today. And maybe, like, there's, there's people, uh, I really hope, who got something out of that, and I pray that, like, God works on people's hearts. But, uh, yeah, that's what I had to share, and I'm going to close out in prayer. Um, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the ability to come share a message. I pray that I preached your word. I, I pray that you used me as a vessel and that this wasn't me, but this was you speaking. Uh, I pray that I speak your word powerfully. Um, I pray that you bless these people as they go on their day, and I pray that you give us a great rest of the week. In your mighty name, Jesus, amen.
Thank you. It was probably, I don't know, 10 years ago, uh, says when you started and talking about weeding, that I had written something for the newsletter, our, our church newsletter about weeding, because I was in the garden weeding, and I'm like, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot going on <laughs> a lot here. And if I remember correctly, um, it was just talking about how stubborn those weeds were <laughs> and how you have to keep going back at them again. <laughs> so I appreciate it very much, your, your message. So thank you. So the Lord, this song, Build My Life, it is worthy, talking about how Jesus is worthy of our, of our lives, of worthy to be in that number one spot because of all that he does for us. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could have her say. Worthy of every breath we could have her breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There Wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. could have her sing worthy of all the praise we could have her bring worthy of every breath we could have her breathe we live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could have a say. Worthy of every breath we could have a breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. upon your 
trust in you all alone and I will not be shaken and I will build my life upon your love it is a full foundation and I Thank you so much. Um, I have collected the prayer requests from the back, um, as well as those that are online. Um, so let's take a time to pray. Lord, we lift our hearts and our souls to you, and we thank you for being an ever-present person in our lives, Lord. We start with a moment of silent prayers for everything we have on our hearts that we can't say aloud, that we can't write down, Lord. We lift these silent prayers to you. Lord, we know only your love is unconditional and can satisfy us. Lord, no matter what happens in life, in your love, we know that you are there for us. Lord, tonight we have a lot of concerns that are on our hearts. Lord, we think about, we think about youth, Lord, with mental health issues, Lord, especially those struggling with depression. And it's not only our youth who are struggling with this, Lord. It's a lot of people. And we pray that you put your hand on them. Let them know that they're not alone. Let them know that you are there with them and you love them. Lord, please make your presence known to them and let them feel that. Lord, we also want to pray for one of our youth members' families who is having a tough time right now with covid um, please protect the family, protect the youth member who is in there as well, um, and help them to feel better. Help them to become stronger. Um, it might take time, Lord, but we know that you are there. We know that you are present in that time, and you will help this family through it, whatever way you see fit, Lord. And we pray that you are able to just hold that family and help them, Lord. We also, we also want to pray for the family of Dottie O'Loughlin, Lord. Um, comfort them, Lord, on her passing. Please be there with them. Let them know that they're not alone. Even though Dottie has passed, you are still there. Lord, help them to lean on you, lean on those around them who can help them during this time. And Lord, we also want to pray for safe travels for family and friends, Lord, as they, as they travel for an exciting event. Lord, we want to pray that they can travel safely, 
And Lord, anyone who's traveling around the world right now, no matter where they're going, please help them. Lord, your greatness, is, your greatness surpasses all of our understanding. We thank you in all things. And Lord, I pray that we thank you even when our lives are, are going well, even when they're tough, Lord. But sometimes I feel we forget to pray to you when everything's going well. Lord, you provide for us in the good. You provide for us in the bad. And God, we thank you for giving us this new beginning. In your name, Lord, we thank you. We praise you, we worship you, and now we lift up our praises of thanksgiving, Lord. Um, in a couple weeks here, um, Sarah and Bruno are getting married. Um, it's hard to pray for that. Um, but Lord, we pray um, your blessing on our marriage, Lord, and we thank you for that time, and we thank you for friends and family who will be there to celebrate with us. Um, and Lord, we, we want to celebrate our time together as well with Bob and Kathleen. Lord, we know that you have more plans for them, um, and we pray for their safe travels, and we pray for their next adventure, Lord. Thank you. Lord, you are always present in our lives, and we thank you for that. You are here during the bad times, the good times, the stressful times, all the time, and we thank you. You love us. You give us this new beginning in your name. You baptize us in your holy name, and we, we praise you, and we thank you for that. Lord, your timing is perfect, and I pray you help us to see that and believe that in you, to trust in you and trust in your timing. Lord, we lift our hearts and we praises and everything that our soul has to you. And we thank you and we praise you in your precious holy name. Amen. So why don't we stand together celebrate the fact that Jesus is our Lord, that we are here standing through all that everyone has been through in this past year or so in our corporate lives. Um, and together we can make the statement that Jesus is the center of our lives. And every day that we can refresh and um, have his power and his love and his truth and mercy to help us along the way. Jesus, be the center.
Vida Santa Jesus Vida Santa Be my home Be my song Thank you all for being with us tonight. What a great night this has been. Uh, Kyle, great job, great job, and thank you so much. Thank you for being obedient. And uh, our very best to the good folk at New Testament Church. Please return our greetings to them. We certainly go with prayers for Bob and Kathleen and the new adventure. Uh, I don't know if New Jersey is ready for them or, or, South, or Lower Manhattan, but that'll be, we know there'll be great things ahead. And I want to introduce you, never, we've never had a speaker by this name before, but next month you might want to come and hear Sarah Marcolino preach. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night. We ask that you go with each of us, that we might go forth keeping your name, your joy, your goodness, your kingdom, our priority, that you'd help us to uh, do the weeding, but also to keep the main thing the main thing. You are the main thing. We love you, we honor you, we entrust ourselves to you, and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night, everyone. Thank you.